Ever since rap music has existed, rappers have been boasting about their lavish lifestyles. This was even the case when said lifestyles didn't actually exist. The Sugar Hill Gang's Big Bank Hank famously bragged about his Lincoln Continental and Sunroof Cadillac on one of the first ever rap recordings, Rapper's Delight, at a time during which Hank was working as the manager of a pizza parlor. But rap did eventually become big business. And as is the case with all multi-billion dollar industries, many fortunes have been made and lost in the rap game. Today we'll be looking at rap artists who once sat on top of the world, only to find themselves in the basement when bad decisions, greedy entourages, and the IRS caused them to go flat broke. As a member of rap group The Fugees, Lauryn Hill got an early taste of commercial success. The outfit's second album, 1996's The Score, went six times platinum and established Hill as a featured vocalist on the hit single Killing Me Softly. Both the single and album won Grammy Awards, and her hot streak continued with the acclaimed 1998 solo release The Miseducation of Lauryn Hill. The future appeared bright, but Hill's troubles began that year, when four studio musicians brought a lawsuit against her alleging that they were not properly credited for their work on the album. The suit was settled for $5 million, but this was only the beginning of Hill's money woes. Her 2001 appearance on MTV's Unplugged was a disaster due to Hill's damaged vocal cords, and subsequent attempts to corral willing artists to contribute to a second solo album for little to no compensation went nowhere. In 2013, Hill was jailed for three months for failure to pay over a half million dollars in back taxes, and she she spent the time since her release playing spotty live shows to middling crowds and attempting remixes of work by more popular artists such as Drake. The notoriously unreliable Hill still maintains a career-long habit of showing up late or not at all to concerts, and while she's busy trying to shoulder her way back into the music industry, she faces an uphill climb. Nasir Jones, professionally known as Nas, is an unqualified hip-hop legend. His 1994 debut release, Illmatic, is to this day considered one of the greatest albums the genre has ever produced. And even though his output has slowed considerably since the 90s, his lyrical dexterity still regularly places him near the top of the greatest rapper ever lists. But his musical pedigree notwithstanding, Nas has also made a habit of blowing off the tax man. And recent allegations of severe abuse by his ex-wife, Khalees, are going to make it tough for the 44-year-old rapper to reclaim his place at the top. In 2017, Nas spent a whopping $3.5 million to appease Uncle Sam, which only partially covered his IRS debt, but kept him from getting hauled off to jail. He reportedly still owes tens of thousands to the state of Georgia, a debt which a new Kanye West-produced album might have helped to alleviate if not for the high-profile abuse allegations. He may be one of the greatest rappers of all time, but attempting to mount a career comeback amid such accusations while deep in debt and in the middle of the hashtag MeToo movement might not be such a winning strategy. Lil' Kim made her name in the late 90s as a protege of Notorious B.I.G. and Bad Boy Records, and famously appeared on tracks with titles like All About the Benjamins and Get Money. Kim was never one to hide her materialistic side, but she was apparently much, much worse at managing money than she was at rapping about it. For starters, Kim has racked up a $1.8 million IRS debt of her own, while also managing to get herself deep into debt to the tune of $4 million. Despite reporting a net worth of $18 million in 2017, Kim knocked off the following year by having her $3.1 million New Jersey mansion foreclosed upon. Her Queen Bee Entertainment Company may generate close to $200,000 per year, but Kim's earnings simply haven't been enough to put even a dent in the massive mountain of debt she's accumulated. On top of her tax debt and various loans and expenses, she's also on the hook for nearly $200,000 in legal fees, and those fees don't look like they're going to stop piling up anytime soon. At one time, Stanley Burl, aka MC Hammer, was one of the most successful recording and touring artists on the planet. In the 90s, he was pulling down an insane $30 million per year, a streak which lasted nearly half a decade. Unlike some of the artists on this list, however, Hammer didn't get an arrears to the IRS or amass a ton of debt. Amazingly, he simply found ways to spend every dime of that money. At the height of his success, Hammer bought a $1 million mansion with a staff of over 200, which literally cost him a half million dollars per month just to keep running. Among his other ill advised purchases, a stable stocked with 19 pricey thoroughbred racing horses, a private jet, not one but two private helicopters, and a Lamborghini. Just when his spending habits were straining his bank accounts the hardest, he was hit with a plagiarism lawsuit by the estate of Rick James over his smash hit You Can't Touch This, and all it took was that one delicately placed straw to break the camel's back. In 1996, he sold his mansion and filed for bankruptcy, and it's only been in recent years that he's managed to claw his way out of the poorhouse through a series of savvy investments. Today, his net worth is about $1.5 million, a comparatively meager amount compared to his heyday. 
Bow Wow, formerly Little Bow Wow, made his name as a protege of super producer Jermaine Dupri. After making a splash with his contribution to the Wild Wild West soundtrack in 1999, he spent much of the next decade dropping well-received releases and nurturing a burgeoning career as an actor in films such as Like Mike and The Fast and the Furious Tokyo Drift. Like many rappers of his vintage, his lyrics tended to focus on how much money he was making and how fast he was spending it. And perhaps more so than most, he doesn't appear to have been idly boasting. There's simply not much else to explain where all of his money went, as Bow Wow asserted that his finances were in dire straits when he was taken to court for back child support in 2012. At that time, Bow Wow claimed that his sole income consisted of $4,000 per month as an employee of his new label Cash Money Records, and that he was down to his last $1,500 in his checking account. Signed to Bad Boy Records in 2015, Bow Wow continued to rap about his lavish lifestyle nonetheless, and even posted a picture to Instagram in 2017 of a private jet he was supposedly flying to a show. Embarrassingly, the pic was discovered to be just a stock photo easily found online, and a fan later spotted the rapper flying coach. The gravel-voiced MC known as Exhibit, real name Alvin Joyner, had a successful mid-90s rap career after garnering huge buzz with his debut single Paparazzi, and scored a career high with the top-selling album 40 Days and 40 Nights in 1998. But he's perhaps better known as the host of the MTV reality series Pimp My Ride, which introduced him to a nationwide audience in 2004. The show's success might have meant an unprecedented level of popularity for the rapper, but if Exhibit himself is to be believed, it was also the chief source of his money problems. That is to say that the show's 2007 cancellation left him hurting for income, causing him to amass a massive tax bill in excess of $1 million. While the loss of one admittedly lucrative gig might seem like a poor excuse, his financial records bear it out. In the show's final season, Exhibit's income approached half a million dollars. By the next year, it had dipped hard, below 70000 In 2009, the rapper filed his first of two eventual bankruptcy claims, both of which were unfortunately dismissed. He's managed to square his tax bill in the years since with acting roles in films such as X-Files I Wanna Believe and the television series Empire, but it's been a long Long recovery, and it's safe to say the rapper still isn't exactly rolling in dough. Joseph Cartegna, aka Fat Joe, is a Bronx legend. He began as a member of the legendary Diggin' in the Crates crew before graduating to dropping solo hits, beginning with his debut album Represent in 1993, and eventually forming his own label Terror Squad, to which he signed hot acts such as Big Pun and Remy Ma. His career has been nothing short of stellar, but he too has found himself in hot water with the IRS on multiple occasions. Joe even served a four-month federal prison sentence for tax evasion in 2013, due to a situation which he blames on a shady accountant who failed to pay his taxes for two periods. But either this was stretching the truth a bit, or Joe hasn't learned his lesson. Despite his insistence in 2013 that all of his tax debts had been squared, the IRS slapped him with a $1.1 million lien in 2016 for three additional periods. Joe might have the flow, but the tax man is only concerned with whether he had the cash, and if the past is any indication, he may be looking at more rough times ahead. Young Buck gained popularity as the protege of rapper 50 Cent, getting his start with Cash Money Records before finding his greatest success as a signee to 50's G-Unit Records label. His 2004 effort straight out of Cashville, you may see a theme developing here, was a platinum smash, and his subsequent falling out with the G-Unit crew didn't do much to dim his popularity. However, the rapper soon ran into financial problems for the simplest of reasons. As a young man from the streets, he was never taught to manage money properly, and he had never paid taxes in his life. After attaining platinum success, Young Buck did what most people in his situation would do, and made sure that his family, including his four children, were provided for. He also continued to blow off filing taxes right up until the IRS raided his house, a raid during which an unregistered firearm was discovered. He served 18 months on weapons charges from 2012 to 2013, but these weren't the end of his legal issues. In 2016, he was arrested for threatening to burn down the house of a former girlfriend, and later that year was sentenced to seven months in federal prison. His issues with the IRS are ongoing, and with limited income, he may not have seen the inside of a prison for the last time. Haitian-born Wyclef Jean is another member of the Fugees whose solo career eclipsed even that of the legendary group. His 1997 album The Carnival is widely considered a classic, and he has been steadily releasing well-received albums ever since. Jean's finances have always been less than transparent. After the 2012 Haiti earthquake, he was questioned about his charitable firm's handling of over $16 million in contributions, questions which were never sufficiently answered after the foundation closed its doors. It's a bit unclear why such a prolific entertainer should have money issues, but he certainly does, as evidenced by his whopping $2.9 million tax bill. It's a bill which Jean seems ill-equipped to deal with, considering that he has failed to make good on an arrangement to pay off fees owed to a famed Hollywood law firm of Shukat, Arrow, Hafer, Weber, and Herbsman, to the tune of a comparatively paltry $100,000. According to Jean's business manager, he isn't trying to stiff anybody. There simply isn't any money, because Wyclef Jean is somehow flat broke. 
Earl Simmons, better known as DMX, burst onto the scene in 1998 with his major label debut, It's Dark and Hell is Hot. Later that year, he released his second album, Flesh of My Flesh, Blood of My Blood, and in doing so, became the first rapper ever to have two albums debut at number one on the Billboard charts in the same year. Since then, he's assembled a formidable discography, and certainly made a ton of money, but he's also been his own worst enemy, engaging in bizarre, unpredictable, and criminal behavior which has led to a never-ending parade of legal issues. In addition to running afoul of the law for everything from drug and weapons possession to reckless driving and driving without a license. DMX has fathered an astounding 15 children, the mothers of which are owed over $2 million in back child support. He's also racked up an eye-watering $2.3 million tax bill, leading to his conviction on tax evasion charges in 2018. He may have once been on top of the game, but there are few riches to rag stories more complete than the career of DMX, the biggest financial meltdown in rap history.